Hi guys, my name is Jamie. I'm an intern here at Chiha, and today for our Keeper Talk, we have our ring-tailed lemurs. So you guys probably haven't seen these guys for a while. They've actually been off display since late 2018. That was when Hurricane Michael came through and unfortunately destroyed their exhibit. Uh, we do have plans to get them back out onto display. We'd really like to display them again. Unfortunately, we don't know when it's gonna happen. It takes a lot of time and effort to be able to rebuild an entire enclosure. So for now, they're chilling out back here in our quarantine uh, building. So ring-tailed lemurs, they actually like to hang out in groups. So they usually have family groups of about 30. In our troop, we have about four. Well, we do have four. Uh, their names are Woodsy, Joey, Alexandra, and Adia. And we have Woodsy right here hanging out. Will you come over and see us? So ring-tailed lemurs love their fruits and veggies. That's primarily what they get for their diet. And we have Joey coming to hang out too. So, in, like I said, in the wild, these guys live in family groups. They have a lot of really cool social calls that they do. You might hear occasionally our red rough lemurs who are calling. They do more of a vocal alarm call like that. But these guys don't quite do that, but they do a lot of other calls to uh, communicate with each other, tell each other what's going on, where they are, maybe if they found something cool. So these guys, you might notice, they have a lot of really fluffy fur. Woodsy, show them how fluffy your fur is. So these guys have a lot of really cool grooming adaptations. So something that they have, their bottom teeth are actually arranged in kind of a comb, and it's actually called a tooth comb. So it helps them to groom themselves and groom each other. Social grooming is very important to these guys living in the groups like they do. Kind of camera shy. So, and then if they have spots on them that they can't reach with their mouth, they actually have something uh, called a grooming claw or a toilet call, claw, if you want to call it. I prefer grooming claw. And that helps them get to places that they can't normally reach on their own. And what do you guys think? Some cool facts, right? <laughs> so these guys love hanging out outside. Ringtail lemurs are more terrestrial than a lot of lemur species. That means they spend more of their time on the ground than other lemur species. They do, as you can see out in their yard, they have a lot of perching that they can climb onto and also their indoor area that they can climb on. And they love grapes. It's one of their favorite treats. So I'm bribing them a little bit to hang out with me. So lemurs are primates. Now that you might notice that they are a lot different than say monkeys like capuchins or gorillas or other uh, primate species like that and that's because all lemur species actually uh, evolved on the island of Madagascar so you might remember the movie King Julian and all the lemurs there so that's why they're so different is because they evolved separately than a lot of other primate species so you might notice all lemurs kind of uh, share traits with each other's and then other primates kind of share their own traits together now, Madagascar did kind of get one thing wrong. So instead of a King Julian, they, would act they are actually more of a matriarchal society. So the females are the ones in charge. You guys can come back over and see. So it's more female run. The females are dominant. They kind of get first choice of food, first choice of pretty much everything. And then the males kind of follow in behind them. Now you guys are probably looking at these guys and you're thinking, they're adorable, I want one, surely they must make good pets. No, absolutely not. Lemurs would not make good pets at all. And that's part of the reason that they are endangered right now is because of the pet trade. Because people look at them and they think they're so cute and cuddly and fuzzy, uh, but they don't make good pets. They belong in the wild or but they belong in managed care like in zoos. So looking at these guys, like I said, they've got a lot of perching. They love to jump and climb and get all over the place. So imagine coming home and your pet is on your ceiling fan. That would be terrifying, but that's what these guys love to do. Climb up high, be anywhere that they can be. Um, they also scent mark a lot. So lemurs have multiple scent glands on them. Uh, a lot of them are on their chests or by their tails. So they'll scent mark a lot to mark their territories or just say, hey, here we are. So on top of climbing everywhere, they're also kind of dirty and hard to clean up after. And then I also said with their diet, so they get a lot of fruits and veggies here. You know, with a dog or a cat, you might go be able to go to the store and get a bag of cat food or a bag of dog food. 
a bag of lemur food doesn't exist. So here they get uh, primate biscuits, which is a biscuit that has important vitamins and nutrients that they need. And then they get a, a diet of fresh, fresh fruits and vegetables. So they'll get sweet potatoes, carrots, sweet potatoes. They get grapes for treats. Uh, bananas are also something they really like, but they'll get a variety in their diet that usually people just can't uh, keep up with. What do you think? <laughs> oh, we have some more coming up for their treats. <laughs> so this is Joey here. He's one of our males. He's a bit more bold than the others. You guys want to come up for more? <laughs> what do you think? Uh, Maybe not. All right, well, that's about it for us and the ringtails. So we'll see you guys back here tomorrow.